Hey BP family, welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Fawns. Today we're going to look at the three leech jar aquariums that we built last month. I'm very curious to see how they're doing and I want to check them out with you guys right now. So they are very brown from the tannins in the water, uh, but there's also a lot of green water algae in there as well. And you can see that when they are exposed to the flashlight. I've numbered them jars one, two, and three. Uh, and we're going to take number two and number three and set them on the back burner for right now. Each jar has developed very differently, and uh, they're not at all what I had hoped to see, <laughs> but they are thriving each in their own way, so we're going to check them out. But here in jar number one, we have a successful project. We have raised leeches and snails together in one habitat. They are coexisting. The leeches are feeding on the snails, but not enough to cause them to go extinct. And that's exactly what we wanted to see, so this is very successful. Uh, in fact, BP family, I am happy to report that our leeches are reproducing. We are successfully uh, breeding leeches in this jar. And that is amazing. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, you know, when I incorporate a species into the pet collection, I don't consider it a success until we are able to help them reproduce. And uh, once we can get them breeding, then we can work with them more, and we can learn more about them, and it's a, it's a fun cycle. And we've repeated that for several different species, including those worms there that you see emerging from the water meal. Uh, lower in this jar, we happen to see a very acrobatic bladder snail performing some nice majestic maneuvers here. I thought it was under attack from a leech at this very moment, but it's actually climbing a very uh, <laughs> almost invisible thread attached to the spy crush here. And uh, these bladder snails are truly beautiful, interesting life forms. And they are constantly performing all of these small yet majestic maneuvers in their jars. Um, you know, especially when the world isn't watching. They, uh, they don't get enough credit. They are very interesting. Recently, we were speaking with our friend Esther on YouTube about raising bladder snails and trying to breed uh, color morphs, which is a very interesting idea, very intriguing. Uh, we've played around with that a bit in the past. Here at leech jar number two, I've noticed a big surprise in here. We have dragonfly larvae. I have no idea how they made it in, into this jar. Uh, it should not have been possible, as all of our samples came out of uh, the fish room, and we do not have any dragonflies in the fish room. Uh, in fact, I think there are a couple dragonfly larvae in here. And in this particular jar, I did not see any leeches. That's right. Uh, yeah, there's a few dragonfly larvae in here. I think they may be eating the leeches. I'm not sure if that's something they would go for. Uh, and uh, this raises concerns as... I would have to uh, heavily adapt this jar and modify it so that dragonflies could, you know, emerge from this project and not die. And I would also have to uh, open it up and be prepared to deal with some large flying insects, which I am not currently equipped to handle in the fish room. So we might have to take this jar outside and release them into the one in the ponds. Uh, there's also some nice paramecium in here which is pretty standard for a Bucket Ponds style jar aquarium. Our paramecium are just part of our ecosystem. They're part of our creature collection, but they're doing quite well in here. The moss in this project is not what I had hoped to see. Uh, this is our hypnum moss or possibly flat glaze moss, which we know will grow underwater, uh, but it's definitely struggling. I believe these jars were not receiving enough light. So I have, once again, upgraded the lights in the fish room. <laughs> a small upgrade using some uh, grocery store bulbs, but uh, it should help things. But we do have a population of bladder snails in here, and I do believe that the leeches were being eaten by the dragonfly larva. So I may have to take this one outside and release those dragonfly larva. Most likely add these guys to the pool ponds and... Uh, yeah, we'll call jar number two a forgotten project. No, I'm not worried about bladder snails becoming invasive. I've captured the same bladder snails nearby, and uh, they are worldwide at this point, so not too worried. Now here in jar number three, this is the real star of the show. 
uh, BP family. This is very interesting to me, very, very intriguing. Here we have a ton of aquatic worms here. And though we do not know the species name, we have seen these worms in our creature collection before and never in such dense numbers. Now, these worms may act a bit like our tubaflex, but if you look at them closely, they have a appendage near their mouth. They have some kind of like a, a hood or like a fan that reaches out and they seem to be grabbing small particles out of the water. They are a bit like a fan or almost even like a hand. They seem to be reaching out and trying to grab food. I assume they're reaching for small particles of food drifting throughout the water. Though they may be trying to catch uh, paramecium or other small animals, I'm not quite sure. And this is very intriguing. I hope that one of you guys out there can recognize this body's plan, this, this structure on the ends of their bodies, and you could tell me more about them. Uh, but this is, uh, this is crazy. I've never seen worms like this anywhere else. Only in one of our previous jars last year did we happen to see something like this in the past. So if you know anything about these strange worms, maybe you can help us out. They definitely have an interesting appendage, and they behave a lot like a tubaflex otherwise. I'm so happy about those worms, you guys. <laughs> but we have uh, now ha a large culture of them in one of these jars, and we will be able to uh, take some samples and play with them in the near future. I want to incorporate them in a bunch more projects and learn more about them. So if you can help with that, I would be very grateful. Uh, but now we're going to feed the jars, and uh, we're just using a few small slices of cucumber. Our improvised lids did a good job of keeping any flying insects out. Uh, mainly, uh, I'm not worried about mosquitoes in here, but I am worried about drain flies. If a drain fly lays eggs in one of your jars, then it will eventually crash. It's a rough cycle. Uh, but these lids have done a great job. It's just mesh and mason jar rings. The rest of our cucumber slices we will add to our other projects, and nothing will be wasted. So big thank you to our patrons, Clay Wise, Swan C, Jay, Jeff Kiesner, Ashley Danielle, and our new friends, Kev Wheeler, and Wheelbite. Uh, guys, uh, Wheelbite, I recognize you from the comments like right away, <laughs> so it was really cool to see you in there, thank you. Um, anybody can join Patreon for free, or you can donate any amount, even a dollar helps. Uh, and uh, yeah, guys, I'm just having a lot of fun here. I am very happy to make these videos for you, to hang out with you, to talk in the comments. Um, yeah, you know, Bucket Ponds is growing, and we've always been growing, but it's definitely picked up a lot uh, lately due to our interaction with other YouTube channels and just your general support. So thank you for watching the videos. The more you watch, the more that we engage. Uh, the more time I can devote to these projects. Uh, I'm so happy that we're breeding leeches. Um, those strange worms, you have to check them out, please. Have a great day, guys. I will see you again soon. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it.